All right, you ready? Ready. Let's do it. Today, I'll give you a tour of the builder assist company called Stolet Aircraft, and then take you along for a flight in a just aircraft super stole. Do I even need to do an intro? Okay, so today I'm at Stolet Aircraft in a little town of Fair Play, South Carolina. Fair Play. Fair Play. What a fitting name. My name is Chris Grewan. I'm the owner of Stolt Aircraft. We um, are a just aircraft dealer and we do custom builds and builder assists here at our facility in Fairplay. Um, this is our, our shop, our runways behind us. Um, we build uh, about three or four planes a year and we try and get people into aviation as much as possible. So Chris, what is maybe one of the, the first few steps when a kit arrives to you before you start the build or build assist process? Well, a kit usually comes either in a crate or um, you can pick it up at the factory similar to this with all the material packed into it. Um, you get home, you unpack it and do a good inventory list first to make sure you're not missing any parts. Um, after you get all that done, you're, you're sure you got everything you need. We typically start on doing like the floor pans. Um, so you'll, you'll cut the floor pans down, make them fit, drill them, upsize them, deburr them, um, and then we start going from there um, up to just doing things like putting the flap handle in, building our seats, um, doing some of our battery tray and ELT tray, um, which typically go back here, um, doing some of the basic rigging on the elevator, the push-pull tubes, um, doing your stringers, um, high sawing these in and getting those ready for fabric. Um, we get to that point, we do some of the brakes, um, rudder pedals, that assembly. Um, then of course we tear it all apart before we start covering. We generally start covering with um, some of the smaller parts, the elevator horizontal stab. It gives people a little bit of a chance to get used to doing the covering process and if they mess up they can tear it off without having a huge piece like the fuselage. Um, then we'll move on to maybe doing flaps and ailerons and then start on the fuselage once you get to that point. And what process do you use um, both fabric and glue and paint for your your builds? We use about everything, but um, probably the most popular is doing polyfiber and super flight paint on top. Um, but there's multiple products out there that you can use. You can use about anything that suits your fancy. And about how long does it take to cover one of these aircraft and you can finish it? I, I usually say, you know, to cover, you're probably going to be 30 days to do all the covering of all the parts. It's probably pretty close. You know, by the time you do the finished tapes and um, all the all the all the processes it takes to cover something, you can do a you know a basic cover of a elevator in a couple hours. But by the time you do all the finished tapes and everything, it takes a day or so. So you're probably looking at 30 days to, to cover an airplane. Covering uh, the wings is that kind of the a classic style? Is there rib stitching involved, or how how do you cover no, wings? No, these wings we um, we don't use rib stitching. What we do do is use the rivets nowadays. Um, we use rivets in every other hole instead of rid stitching. It takes a little less time, a little less complicated, um, and it works just as well. You're riveting the fabric? Yeah, too? so you basically what you do is you'll lay your fabric down. Once your fabric's on and it's shrunk, you'll go ahead and melt holes every other hole where these are, and then you put a reinforcement tape on it, and then you rivet to the reinforcement tape so it doesn't burn through the fabric. And then, of course, your finish tapes go over that when you're done. So to explain, uh, first of all, the differences, there's a couple different wing options, apparently, from the Super Stole to the Highlander. So if you could explain what the differences are first on that. The airframes for the Highlander and the Super Stole and the Escapade all have the exact same airframe. Um, they're all the 4130 chromoly steel. They are exactly the same as far as that goes. The wings are different. The Highlander has a wood rib, under camber, more traditional wing. Um, the Super Stole is a metal rib, um, flat bottom wing. Um, the biggest difference is the Super Stoles have slats and spoilers on them, um, which give you really good stability at low uh, speeds. 
Um, the Highlander is a little bit faster, um, but it has a traditional stall characteristic. The standard wing for the Highlander, the way it comes from the factory, is just like this with the ribs set um, and nothing else done. You can, it takes, you know, it probably takes you a hundred hours, maybe not quite a hundred hours to completely build a set of wings. If you get it at that stage, you can do some factory options as a quick build, which will give you stage two or stage three, meaning they'll have part of the wing built for you, or they can completely build it for you and have it ready to cover. The Super Stole is basically the same way. It comes from the factory as a, as a stage one, um, with just the ribs, just like this. Stage two is the way this wing sits, which has the front leading edge skins on it, um, has the slats are already set to the wing. Um, the wings have been set to the fuselage, and then you do some finish work as far as skins and rigging and um, uh, the, the remainder that way. You can also get a quick build uh, ready to cover wing as well. Yeah, so once we, um, once we get some of the covering done, we'll generally start thinking about doing the paint process, and we like to paint the fuselage first. Um, if we do the fuselage, once you get that painted, you can start really bolting stuff on and get that sense of it's finally coming together <laughs> after all your hard work. So um, we'll get the fuselage painted, start mounting the engine and doing some of that stuff. Paint process um, is a little bit taxing, but it's, it's always a fun thing. You know, you get to pick your colors and you see that, you know, that final paint job come to life and see what your vision was. Um, we just decided to try this paint booth which is an inflatable paint booth we found. Um, I haven't had time to build a permanent paint booth yet here, but we're gonna do that next. But this paint booth is about 1500 bucks. We found it on eBay. Um, it's inflatable and it seems to work really good. So um, we're gonna give it a try. We've had other people say they've had good luck with it. Um, and it's a great option because when you're done painting, you can deflate it, roll it up and put it in your garage. And you don't have to have it and take it up a lot of space. Awesome. And explain to me just one next level you did to this because it is inflatable just to keep a little safety factor in case the power went out what, what did you do we, as a safety factor we did build some of these um trusses basically in here to keep it we when we were looking at these online we saw some people that did have uh, power outages and of course their booth collapsed on their paint job which would be a terrible thing when it comes to an airplane so we decided to build these little trusses just in case you lose power and it holds the booth open as you see it's not even running and we can kind of paint without even having the airflow on so once it comes back out of paint, um, we'll start being able to bolt stuff on. Um, that's where you finally start to see, you know, some progress being made. Um, you can start bolting your rudder pedals back in finally. You can put your seats in, put your flap handles in. Um, we have, you know, the nice thing about experimental is you get a lot of options. You can basically, if your mind can think of it, you can do it on an experimental. You're not really held to regulations as a certified type certificated aircraft. So we wanted, like on this airplane, I wanted windows. Um, so we put windows here. Some guys don't like the windows, so they don't. Um, but we, you know, if you can think it and you want it, you can do it with these aircraft. So we can start putting the windows on, our turtle deck back on, um, start doing all the interior fabric. On these, we generally use like a carpet on the interior baggage compartment and on the floor um, and on our floor pans. Um, and then once you get to that point, you can start mounting your engine and doing all your avionics. And that's, you know, that's a little time consuming, but you get that part done, um, and then there's not a whole lot left after that. You can start doing all your finished stuff, you know, all the small parts, um, landing gear, things of that nature, um, and getting it wrapped up. Okay, jumping ahead a little bit, this is a, a finished product here, being that you're kind of uh, mid-build over there. Um, let's talk engines for a minute. What has been the most popular, and over the years, uh, how many different platforms have you installed as an engine? We've done a bunch of different engines, but the most common engine is the Rotax 912 ULS 100 horse engine. It's about the standard when it comes to these airplanes. Um, although you always get these guys that want to do something exotic and try something new, um, the 912 has generally been the engine most people choose. Um, it's got a good reputation. It's been out there for a long time. So, um, you know, most guys don't want to tinker with their engine all the time. So that's what they usually go with. Although you can put any engine on the front of this airplane. And what has been the popular prop and prop size? So anywhere from the Kiev is what we generally use. Um, the Kiev gives you some um, adjustability. It's ground adjustable, so you can do you know good takeoff climb performance, or you can get cruise performance out of it with, with just adjusting the pitch of the prop, which doesn't take but a few minutes. Um, we also use the Cato prop if you want a fixed pitch propeller. Cato is a really very good popular um, propeller. If you're finding value in this video 
Hit the like button on this video and it's really important that you subscribe as it helps me get sponsors like Airworks, Kit Plane Parts, Acme Aero, Edge Performance Engines, and Viking Aircraft Engines. And be sure to check out the links in the description below for special offers from our affiliates. Let's jump back in. So the Super Stoll is a very unique airplane. Um, Troy, when he designed this airplane, he wanted to take the pilot safety into consideration. So he basically used an old technology that uh, commercial aircraft use and the old Helio Courier use, which was slats. The th nice thing about his slats is these things are basically automatic. You don't have to do anything to get them to deploy. You basically raise the nose, get your, a high angle of um, attack, and the slats will deploy. These things will help you at very very low speeds it has helps the air stick to the wing so you don't stall an aircraft um, and they are very very forgiving they make this airplane fly with a lot of forgiveness um, the other nice things on this airplane are the big giant Fowler flaps um, for these which are basically I call them barn doors because they're so darn big um, which can also also help you slow down the other thing on this airplane is if you come around to the back and you look over top of the wing when you get down to very low speeds, you lose your roll rate at very low speeds because you're not getting enough airflow over the wing. So when that started to become a problem, he came up with another idea and put spoilers in the wings. If you see the black things on top of the wing, those are the spoilers. So when you get to very low speeds, that spoiler will pop up and it'll kill the lift on that side of the wing. We're going to talk a little bit about the tail wheel on this airplane. This actually has um, what's called Jim Piccola is the guy that designed that tail wheel. It's a, a lockable, um, it's full cast ring and it's a friction lock tail wheel. Friction lock meaning you can set the tension on the tail wheel. If I pick up the tail of the airplane and try and spin that tail wheel, you almost have to kick it to get it to move. So that's an adjustable tension lock that you can make it looser or heavier. The locking part of it is was just ingenious because guys, you know, we're having problems with ground looping airplanes, especially tail draggers are just kind of inherently unstable as far as takeoff and landings. Um, so he designed this locking feature, which has a pin right here that basically locks into the into the wheel. So if you line up on the runway, you push a lever in the cockpit and you center that wheel, it'll lock in place. And then when you come in to land, as long as you have your stick back and you land, that tail wheel is going to remain in a straightforward position so you don't have any problems with ground looping. Hang on a second, get it in. So this is the locking mechanism. All you have to do is flip this over that way and now the tail wheel is locked. You center it on the runway, that pin will push in and your tail wheel is locked. Um, when you land and you want a taxi, you just flip it back to unlock and the tail wheel unlocks and you can turn as you would when you're taxiing a regular airplane. Okay, so Chris is going to show us real quick what it's like to swing a wing on one of these. So we basically just take it off this turtle deck. And this is all cable and pulleys apparently. Yeah. So we just take this clevis pin out right here. The wing mic? I got it. Let's drive this pin out. A smaller screwdriver. I need a smaller one. Pull the pin. Now the wing's ready to rotate back. Wing comes back. We'll lift the aileron up just to hold it off the wires. And then right here, we have what they call a travel strut, which attaches from right here on the wing back to the tail, and that'll hold it for transport. So if you need to take it on a trailer or you know, put it on the back of your uh, camper, whatever you want to do, you can do that and the wing won't move.
All right, you ready? Ready. Let's do it. Best turn. Best turn. We gotta add power here to make it over the hill. We just landed on the on the downhill. How many planes have you ever landed downhill on? Now, these slats, when I was talking about these slats and this thing stalling, if you look at our angle of attack right there, yeah. and look at the edge of the wing, I mean, we're... Yeah, it's crazy. Our ground speed's 24 miles an hour, 23. And we're just stable as can be. I mean, that's crazy angle of attack right there. And it's not wanting to stall, it's not wanting to do anything stupid. Now, I'll let it over a little bit, but you can, you can cross control it, you can do anything you want with this thing, and it's not gonna do anything stupid with them slats, nothing. I mean, it's just not. Yeah, it's almost like a simulator feel to it. It really is, it's crazy what it'll do. Is that a chicken farm off the left wing there? Yep. My neighbors too though, the guy with the horses has uh, four chicken houses. So like I was saying, with this airplane, slats equal flaps. If your slats are out, you're good flap speed. There they go. Turn the flap speed. But then you have to really power in or nose down because yeah. you're really creating drag at that point. Now we're in a stall. I mean, with the slats out, you're in a stall. You're basically in a full stall right now. But that's how we land this airplane is in a full stall. But you can get really slow. I mean, you look, we're doing 35 miles an hour on approach. That's pretty low, you know? Sweet. And we're back. That was awesome. That was awesome. All right, Chris, well, thanks for the tour. How can people get in touch with you if they'd like to see about getting builder assistance or uh, buy one of these? You can email us at juststoleit.com or, you, or, excuse me, juststoleit at yahoo.com. Um, we're on Facebook as well, and we do have a website that's being developed right now, um, and we'll get that out to you guys as soon as we're done with it. All right, thanks again. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Remember to check out our podcasts on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play.